Imam Bakr salam's lineage ascended both from the paternal and maternal sides to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. His mother was Fatima binti Hassan. His father Imam Zainal Abidin salam was the ornament of the worshippers and the best of all Muslim figures in jurisprudence, knowledge, and religious piety. Long before the Imam was born, the Prophet named him Muhammad after himself and gave him the kunyat of al Bakr. Bakr means the one who splits or expands. Bakr al Alum means who splits or expands knowledge. According to Nur Allah Shushtri, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said the Imam Muhammad Bakr will introduce, spread, and open up knowledge just like the ground is opened up for cultivation. The other nicknames of Imam Bakr salam are Al-Amin, Ash-Shabah, Al-Shakir, Al-Hadi, Al-Sabir, Al-Shahid. It has been recorded in the history that the Holy Prophet sent his greetings to his great-grandson Muhammad Bakr through his great companion Jabir bin Abdullah Al-Ansari. The Prophet said to Jabir, O oh Jabir, you will have a long life, and although you will go blind, but you will meet the fifth Imam in the line of my descendants, whose name will be my name, and who will walk like me. When you will meet him, give him my salam. This prophecy was fulfilled years later when Jabir asked a young man his name in the streets of Medina. The young man replied, Muhammad bin Ali bin Hussein. Jabir immediately recognized him to be the fifth Imam. He embraced Imam Bakr and gave him the greeting sent by the Holy Prophet. Imam Bakr salam, took Jabir to his home and asked his friends to gather there. Jabir narrated the story again to the companions. He then asked for intercession on the Day of Judgment. The Imam agreed and asked him to now convey his greetings to the Holy Prophet. The Imam's Mission Imam Bakr salam, resided in Medina throughout his life. He was the first teacher and pioneer of scientific and cultural movements. Along with his son, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq he used the Prophet's mosque as a school where they delivered lectures to some 4,500 students. Imam Bakr instructed people in the precepts of religion, tafsir quran and the ethics of life. He used to strive very hard to educate culture and guide the people. He taught his pupils theological and religious principles as well as scientific subjects. These teachings have been handed down to us. History shows that the treasure of knowledge which the Imam possessed can only be compared with the Aimma from the progeny of Muhammad. Both friends and foes benefited from his scientific revelation. Similarly, he revealed numerous miracles. Before we hear from Sayyid Ammar Naqshawani, we refer our viewers to the following link for a detailed account of the numerous scientific revelations of Imam Bakir and Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhim salam. He is seen as a colossus of Islamic knowledge and a beacon of light when it comes to each and every one of the Islamic sciences. A man from whose life many lessons may be learned, especially in the fields of jurisprudence, theology and ethics. And many examples may be derived. And a man who was responsible for the spread and the dissemination of many of the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. The solidifying and the crystallization of the school of Ahlul Bayt was performed by Imam al Bakr. He began a lot of the schools of knowledge that reached us until today. Imam Amir al muminin Imam al Hassan, Imam al Hussein, Imam Zain al Abdin were not able in their own respective times to spread the teachings of Rasulullah because they were under much pressure. Imam al-Baqar is the man who began the spread of the teachings of Rasulullah in the school of Ahlul Bayt. He used to sit in the mosque of Rasulullah and he used to spread the words of Rasulullah to everybody. Imam al-Baqar did not just teach Islamic law, Islamic theology, Islamic ethics. Imam al-Baqar wanted to show Muslims every science is worthy of learning in the religion of Islam. Imam al-Baqar also had a job. 
Imam al Baqir taught us, like my grandfather Amir al Mu'mineen, teach Islam, give lectures, teach Quran, but also go out and earn a living. Of the many renowned scholars, the founder and Imam of the Hanafi school, Abu Hanifa, was a student of Imam Bakr and his son Imam Jafar Sadiq for a long period. Abu Hanifa studied jurisprudence, narrations, and other branches of knowledge under both Imams. Most of his knowledge was derived and obtained from Imam Bakr. Imam Bakr saw the rule and demise of many Umayyad rulers such as Muawiyah ibn Abu Sufyan, Yazid bin Muawiyah, Marwan bin Hakam, Abdul Malik bin Marwan, Walid bin Abdul Malik and Hisham bin Abdul Malik. Most of these rulers were oppressive but they were especially cruel towards the ahl bayt and murdered many of the progeny of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Walid bin Abdul Malik's tyranny on the ahl bayt is well known. He was responsible for the murder of Imam Zainul Abidin salam through poisoning in 95 Hijri. After the burial of Imam Zainul Abidin, Imam Bakir salam took over the responsibilities of the Imamat. And as we observe later, Hisham bin Abdul Malik had Imam Bakir poisoned in 114 Hijri. Imam Bakir salam and the tragedy of Karbala. Imam al Hussein, when he was killed on the 10th of Muharram, Imam al Baqir was three and a half years old. At the age of three and a half, was sitting in the tent with his father, Imam Zain al Abideen, at the end of the 10th of Muharram. First thing he sees is his dad very ill on the bed. The second thing he sees is his auntie Zainab running from one tent to another. They burned the tent of Al Muhammad. And when they burned the tents of Al Muhammad, what happened? And Sayyidina Zainab would run from one tent to another. Bibi Um Kulthum would run from one tent to another. Imam al Baqir as a child had to also run. Why? Because the horses were galloping across the children of Ahl al Bayt. Therefore, Imam al Baqir at the age of three and a half had to witness Karbala in front of him and had to also witness the oppression that came after Karbala. Because you know what they did to Imam al-Baqir? He was only three and a half.